everybody can see my screen okay? Just yeah. want to double check that. Excellent, excellent. Well, good afternoon, Holland um, and, and beyond, I imagine. Um, so, this is going to be a session on some Power Query tips and tricks. Um, I'm Mary Fielty. I suspect you know that now. Um, my company is Broad Tree Solutions. I'm based in Northern Ireland and I'm on Twitter quite a lot, um, pretty much exclusively Power BI. And just two things that you just need to know. I love Power BI. I mean, um, I don't necessarily do uber clever, clever stuff in Power BI. I work mostly with um, small to medium businesses and I just allow them to access data in a way they had never expected. And um, I constantly wow them with access to, as I say, information that before that, they would have spent hours gathering, collating, never mind being able to view it in such a, an impress, impressive manner. So I am just a mega, mega fan and have a great, a fantastic job doing what I love, which is, as I said, helping <laughs> customers. <laughs> so another thing just with regards to is this has got absolutely nothing. Let me just do this again. This part has got nothing to do with Power BI, but because I'm based in Northern Ireland, another thing that I do outside of Power BI is um, I'm occasionally an extra in TV and movies, um, which is just, it's not done for any other reason other than it's, it's, it takes working with data, which is all about looking for truth. And the extra mm -hmm. stuff is just fantasy world. And I love it. And I all I had, I'm just so proud of this. I was in Game of Thrones for two seasons. So I just wanted to share really quickly before I completely begin, um, just an example of what that was. So I was a wildling in Game of Thrones, and this is me as a wildling. And this was me before the battle that we were filming over a three-week period. And this is me after the battle. So um, I, and as I say, I'm just, I just kind of was thrilled to have that opportunity and I wanted to throw it in there. So over to the actual session itself. So um, I've got up there that I, I love Power Query because it's part of Power BI, but also Excel. Um, it's such an amazing tool. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that may help you be be a little bit more efficient. Um, there's several I'm going to cover. And as it's just pure demo, we're going to dive straight in. So I'm going to go in now to Power Query. And here we go. And I've got a few options here that I'm going to cover off. So, and I've also, <laughs> I've also had to kind of guide myself along the way. So first up is, this is a this is just a file. It's um, the top 100 movies of all time from MDM, IDM, IMDb. And you'll notice that it's quite, you know, there's quite a lot of columns in it. Perhaps I want to do quite a bit of work in Power Query. And everything's just come in as the data source um, allowed. So I may find that useful to sort the data instead of the columns just being in this particular order. I want to sort these in an alphabetical manner. So let me just show you some of these these things. These tips are easy tips. There is nothing complex here. Um, so I'm just going to show you quickly how you can do that. So it's choose columns, OK, and sort by name. And you'll notice that before I did that, we've got the natural order. But if I sort by name and simply deselect the columns and just select them again and OK that. And you'll see here that we now are decade description directors duration, just like a heartbeat. And all I would say is the name of the step is definitely not very meaningful. So I would highly recommend that you you give that column a better name so that it reminds you as to why you did that in the first place. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is, again, we have 
all the data that's come in and it is not as yet defined the data types. They're all ABCs. Now, we know that you can um, automatically allow Power BI Power Query to determine the data types for you, or you can switch that off and use another method that will be more certain. So how you can be more certain is by, well, there's two, two parts to this. There's just how do you select your entire table? That's going to be covered in this. And then how can you utilize that in a meaningful way? So how you do this, I have only recently found this out through um, MPK Freeman, Friedman, whose surname I probably don't say properly. Um, how you do it is once you know, it's just so obvious, but to select the entire table, just click Control and A. And what that means is instead of when you're transforming the, when you're using detect data type, in a normal fashion, it's probably only scanning the first 100 rows. Whereas if you select all, it will actually be considering all of the columns and you're much more likely to get the right answer. So I'm just going to move that over to detect data type. And as I say, you're going to get a lot more certainty over what's coming through. So that's tip number two. OK. Tip number three is going to, I'm going to cover this a few times because I'm a bit worried about an error I've got, but anyway, I'll cover that shortly. So tip number two is, or tip whatever or number it is, who cares? We're going to go with um, column by examples, which as I say, I adore. So let me just demonstrate. What we have here is a date of birth. And I want to use column by examples to determine an age from that date of birth. And I want to show you how simple it is once you know how. So first off, right click on that column, even though it's the only column in the data. If you had multiple columns, you just if you're going to be doing column from examples against a <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> a particular column, make sure you select it so that Power Query knows that's the column that it's interested in. And then click on Add Column from Examples. And now we get this new um, area where we can start to train the data. Not dissimilar to what um, Laura was showing whenever she was extracting the data from web, where you're basically training the data to um, to figure out what it is that you want to do with it. So first off, before I even do the age, let's do a little, if I just double click on the first row, double click, let me just show you what you can do with a, um, a date field. So you can just repeat the date field for whatever. Um, but look at all the other information that you can glean. You can get day from date of birth, day of week, the actual weekday of the um, date itself, um, the day of the year, and so on, right through to really, really useful things such as, such as end of week, start of week. Now, I know in the past I've I've been feeling quite chuffed with myself for figuring out how to do that manually, but the end of the day you just you just can just say right against this date column find me the start of the week or the end of the week which could be really useful in your model for um as a slicer or a filter where you just get the answer straight off the bat you'll see that the months there the years there are all sorts of things that you could possibly want but we don't want any of those for this particular one what we're interested in is the age from date of birth. So I'm going to choose that. And boom, I've got the age and I've even got the right column header, so I don't need to change it. And I'll just accept that by clicking OK. And now we have the age. However, the data type that it's allocated is duration. So that's not going to work with my demo. So I am going to change that to a whole number. 
So I said, stop being a duration and become a whole number. So this is now the days since that date of birth, the days that have passed since that date of birth. And now I've got what I want. I've actually got something I can work with. And I'm going to simply go and because remember, we want to get the age. We, nobody starts talking about themselves as how many days old they are. So if we then take that and go to the transform and use the divide, we can then simply divide this by 365.25. And we now are starting to get closer to the person's age. So this person is 81.032 blah, blah, blah. So the next phase of determining the age is to simply round it down. And boom, this person is 81 years of age, this person is 39, 41 and so on. So look, we're, we're, we don't even, we have no extra columns, um, it just works. Now, there is one thing I want to point out in case you do end up finding yourself with an extra column. There are two places to do that calculation. You can do add column and divide here. I'll just go on ahead and insert this step, 365.25. And this time, because I'm on that tab, it's automatically responding to it by saying, right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll carry out your action, but I will add um, a new column. So just in case you find that happens when you're experimenting with it. So now, we've got an age. The next thing we want to do from that age is we want to put that age into bands. So once again, here we go, add column from examples where you're going to find a seam. And let's say we want to just add this into age bands. <laughs> that has just, by just telling it in one row, it has turned round and put that age into age bands. I could go further and like I just I could go right. You're in the age band 80 to 85. In fact, I'll even just oh cancel cancel. I'll even change that to I'll just again. I want to be just show that how fluid this is. So this is 80 to 85. So instead of a dash. And again, it's just automatically boom. And I don't want to create, I don't want to rename this that after the event. So I can just go on ahead and give that a clearer name. So we've now got age range. And then the final thing in this particular column from examples part is I also thought, right, let's see how about, can I get these people into decades? So add column from examples. Now this time I'm going back to the date of birth because it's against that. And I want to put this into decades. So I want to say, look, it's 1930. OK, and then 1980. Boom, we're in decade. Oh, that's not true. This is the thing about Power BI Right, so 1970. Need to give it a little bit more training on this one. So we have now got this as into decades. And then just to, again, just to show how you can. Decade is really not 1980, it's the 1980s, it's 1930s. And you just keep going with the goddamn thing and it will figure out eventually. Not always. This, I mean, this is a demo, so therefore we're kind of more likely to uh, Typo in the second one, Mary. Is there? What should it be? Ah, 1930s. Thank you, Laura. Thank you very much, because that obviously would not help. Uh, do, 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 do. Fix that. Fix that. And then hopefully this will work. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And I will move on. But it has. Yes. Boom. So we've now got the decade, as I would want that to be. And OK, that. Lovely. Now, 
<laughs> Laura was very kind to say about getting an applause and I I did get an applause and it was for the range and I, I mean I wish it was an applause for me but I think it was really an applause for just like wow wow because if you look if you look at what's going on with that code that's the driving that you know it's complex code um, and again testing out if column form examples is going to work for you is always always worth it and I find um, when it when it works and it does it for you you know you don't have to figure it out yourself and you've saved a lot of time and you get a kind of buzz out of it at least I do anyway okay so the next one which again that's got the decades in the next one again which is parsing names it's still we're still on the column from examples and this one's this one I'm just going to go on ahead add and what I want to do with this actually I'll cancel it out for a second let me just show you the data itself what we're looking at here um, is we've got the full name which in this case first one is Karen, Mrs Karen Adams but if you get to, to row four, it's Geraldine McLeish, which I'm sure not a name that you would necessarily know. But, you know, you'll see that in some cases we've got a title and in some cases we don't. So this is not your typical, um, this is not a text to columns or just using a standard column for an example. So this is a little bit more complex than that. And it's the kind of stuff that, again, in other, you know, back in the day, going off and having to research it um, and come up with other people's work, um, you know, in SQL or something like that and um, and using functions that I kind of thought, well, I don't really understand it, but it's doing it. Um, so again, just to demonstrate just the, the joy of working with Power Query. Um, again, we're going to use column firm examples. So in this case, I want to say Karen. Ah, don't want it to be caps though. And look, we've got Karen matching Stuart, Stuart, Suzanne, but then we get to Geraldine and it's coming up with the surname. Of course it is, because it's it's figuring out right. Well, you just want you just want the second part. So we've just got to give it a little bit more um, information. And in my case, I'm a poor speller. And look, there's the second one in, and now we've got it. And I'll just call that first. I'll just go FN for now. And look, look at the lovely, hardly any steps are taking place. We've just got nice stuff going on. So next up, we want to get the surname. But remember, this is slightly different than usual. So kick in, column from examples. And let's go Adams. And it's kind of not, it's going right. I've got I've got what you want for these, these lot. I'm not quite sure what you mean here. So again, let's go. H-A-N-N-E-Y. And we now have the surname. Now, the thing about why I actually wanted to make a reference to this was I did this last month. I did this or when, when it was the, the March release of Power BI and I had to do a lot more work to get the surname from the first name. I had to train it much longer than two, two attempts. So again, these are all the reasons why I love Power BI is it just keeps getting better. It just keeps helping you do things faster um, and without having to really try too hard. So that is the parsing of the names. And then I'm dreading to think what this error is. This is really worrying me. What on earth are you? Did I? Right, bear with me a second, will you? Because um, I have probably, yes, I know what that is. You are going to have to bear with me. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. And uh, da, da, da. that's not it. Where's my? Oh, yeah, because you are in there. Do, do, do. 
I renamed something, which was really foolish, but I did it. So, um, ah, I really don't want to do that. But, Annoying, so annoying. You shouldn't mess about with things before you are going to do something. And I did, and that was dumb. Right. Just gonna have to do something here to fix it. Bear with me. Okay, <laughs> sorry about this. I do apologize and um, don't want that one. I will be with you in a moment. OK, I'll talk about it as a concept because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I am uh, anyway, um, anyway, Mary, here's the Mary, yes? if I can uh, interrupt you for a second. Um, I think yeah. you're missing the extension in the in the parameter. So the, the, the dot CSV. Ah, is that, is that correct. You yeah. are absolutely right. And attendee uh, also uh, was saying that. Yeah, that and I yeah, I have a feeling it would still be. So I think I can still talk about this conceptually. Um, it really doesn't matter too much. OK, so it real. this is to do with this is to do with. When you're bringing in data from a CSV or a text file, OK, um, when a new column turns up, turns up in your original your source data, your query will not find it. It will know nothing about it. OK, so we have imagine this was the data as it arrived originally right so just you know from film title to the genre and there was at the time of this being built there was no new column and this is this applies to csv and to text files right so you want to kind of always make sure that any any data that's relevant is going to come into the the model itself so i will go to the source and the simple way to deal with this is if you look here or here, we've got columns six. So at the time of bringing it in originally, it's been predetermined to have six columns and or five as we would have had if this had worked properly. But what you can do is just get rid of that step, just delete it all together and it shouldn't affect anything. Well, it might. Ah, 
<laughs> it shouldn't affect anything. But it does mean that when new data comes through, it will still become immediately available to you. It's as simple as that. So apologies for that going so horribly wrong. Um, I'll maybe keep that there because I'll probably want to do something else. So mm -hmm. I'm going to add a column to this for the next one. Um, and we'll just we'll call it this. The type. We'll just call it that. This, so we're just going to pop in a new column. OK, so we've got this custom column and it's all this. This is just a really quick tip on as you get more exposed to Power, to Power Query. Um, if you're anything like me, you kind of challenge yourself to have as few steps in the applied steps as possible because it just makes it easier for yourself. So prior to you, you can normally you would kind of go here and change that to text. And then that's what's going to change and you, you know, add a new step in. But it's actually really easily solved just in this area here. So if we go to change type as an example, this is where you can see what, how these things are defined. So the film title is type text. The year is, t is no type. There's just is um, integer or int 64 dot type. OK. So bearing that in mind, if we then just do column and follow the, the, the logic as we saw before. Um, and for those of you who are not aware, <laughs> TYPA text. Our, our query is case sensitive. So you've got to be totally case sensitive. And we just hit return. And we now have the data type defined as no longer ABC, but defined as ABC. And we don't have to yet have an extra step added into it. Go back here. Look, by fixing that, you're right. I should have paid attention um, and not gone back, but I didn't. So there you go. Let's just delete that. And now we get the new column in. So that's good. We got to see it. <laughs> we got to see it in action. OK, so the next thing is there's a new just this again came out in April. And what we have here is if you add things in, apologies if anybody can hear a dog crying in the background, but there is a dog crying in the background. Um, <laughs> um, there's nothing happening to it. There's nothing bad. It's just we call her Gloria Gurner um, for that very reason. So. If you put things into your description, you then get this upper, you will get this indicator here, which I think is super useful um, just to let you know that there's something that you've put into the comments. So that's a lovely little feature. So that finally, if I go back to my comments, the properties and what I've said here is the final little piece I'm going to do now is don't forget to show the quickest way to, sing, to, to reference a single column from another table. So let me just quickly f finish off with that. I would like to, we'll say, um, I would like to reference film title and I want to create a unique list of film type titles, perhaps for a lookup or something like that. So previous to that, I would have I would have referenced this. I would have removed all columns and I would have removed removed duplicates. But let me show you another way. And it is simple about it's it's about putting in a new query and we'll just reference reference the table. So the table is new info. And then double square brackets, not not curly braces, but double square brackets. And we'll just type in the column that I'm interested in. There we go. And we can then do the remove duplicates. And it's just such a clean way to reference that and get back the, the information. So just to show you again what that's like. It was reference the table, double brackets, reference the column and boom, we're done. So that is it. I just want to do a quick, quick recap. And thank you very much for your time and Let's get back here. 
go away and you can go disappear too. And if anybody would like to download the file, you'll see there it's a bitly and it's Power BI um, Days Holland. OK, so that's that's the, the link to get to the file and the supporting files. So as I say, thank you very, very much. Um, what we covered was how to quickly select all columns, how to easily court say A to Z, CSV, how to allow new columns in, took a bit of time, actually a ridiculous amount of time, apologies. Column firm examples, age, age range, decade, parsing names, change data types without including a step, um, how to see visual clues for your comments and make ease easily reference to a column from another table. Thank you very much and happy Friday. Yes, thanks uh, Mary. That's, uh, there were some great uh, tips and tricks. Oh, stop sharing. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, we have one question um, actually from the, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it, it was about um, uh, tip one. Um, I saw that with tip one, you broke the query folding. Um, don't you find that a problem? I'm following a, a 30 days challenge about this. <laughs> so, so that's why I'm focused on this uh, on the moment. I think it's the challenge from uh, from Alex Powers. It is, on, it uh, is. On YouTube, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, and it looks like a fascinating challenge. Absolutely fascinating challenge. Um, yes, perhaps I did. Um, and for let me just go back and double check on tip one. Yes, I would say that there's no doubt about that. That is not necessarily performance driven. Yeah. And what I could what I would suggest that you could easily do if you OK, you're focused on your while you're doing the challenge. None of this is going to work, but you could do that early step while you're developing and you just want to know exactly where your columns are should that be valuable to you and then you delete it when you're done so that it doesn't in interfere with with um any kind of performance issues but obviously not for your 30-day challenge for a play to you for that <laughs> yeah correct and of course you're using a csv as a source so query folding uh, doesn't yeah. happen at csv yeah. so yeah, but if you're if you're using a database, for example, then uh, yeah, you should take care of uh, of query folding. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And as I say, and there's nothing in here that's massively complex. It's just um, nice little easy things, and just the part query is such fun to work with. Yeah, correct. And if you want to know more about the query folding, I'm just gonna uh, gonna uh, put in a session uh, for myself um, uh, this Monday. Uh, this Monday evening, I'm I'm giving a session on query folding um, uh, at Data Minds. So it's, it's also a webinar, datamind.be. You can um, uh, you can register there for uh, for some more information on query folding if you want to. Um, okay, so I believe there are no more questions um, to be answered. Mm -hmm. um, we shared the link again to your uh, materials in the in the chat. Lovely. Um, so that's great. Um, so Mary, thanks again for uh, for sharing. Um, and also Laura for uh, for the first session. Absolutely, um, yeah. The sessions are recorded. Um, we're going to do some editing and then they will be available at uh, recordings.parbiates.com. Um, the link was also shared in the in the chat already. Um, our, we were also planning our next event uh, for June already. Um, so more information on, on, the, on that later. Um, and if you uh, would like to present sometime at, uh, at Power BI Days uh, Netherlands, then please uh, reach out to us also. Um, that can be on Twitter or powerbidays.com. Um, that's uh, that's okay. Um, so yeah, the query folding session will be uh, this Monday, Monday evening, um, European time. So it's on, on datamines.be. That's the, the link uh, that Mark shared a little bit earlier. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to thank everyone and um, we'll see you later. <laughs>